Hi yogis, welcome to your practice. My name is Anne, I am happy to be here with you today. Today we are going to be focusing on the hips. So this practice will help you just loosen up the hips, create more space there, and also we all know that the hips are a place where we store a lot of emotions, so sometimes they can feel really tight, and a lot of times the correlation from Loosening up the hips can also mean that you're unleashing some of that stuff that you've stored in there. Old habits, old ways of thinking that you no longer need to be happy today. So let's get started. We're going to sit cross-legged in Sukhasana. If this is hard for you, sit up on a cushion here. Try to get your heels in line with the center of your torso. Turn your palms down for grounding and close your eyes settle into your practice. We all made it to our mats, which I find to be the very hardest part. Start to just find your breath here, focusing the breath in and out through your nose. Taking a few really deep breaths to just fully arrive, grounding our energy and helping to transition from whatever you just were doing into your practice. Takes a moment or two. Think about what you need from today's practice and set an intention in your mind. Might just be one word or something specific. Let your hands just slowly migrate more towards your knees. With your next inhale, draw your heart across your right thigh. Sweep your chest forward. Exhale, you'll circle around the back and round back, maybe tucking your chin in. Moving into our Sufi rolls, allowing yourself to just create some loosening and lubrication for the hips, awakening the whole body here. So just depending on your body, you're going to feel this in different places. Moving into a space of loosening, not only physically, but also mentally, loosening the reins on anything that you've just been hanging on to that just isn't serving your purpose anymore. And sometimes we go through the practice and we know exactly what we want to get rid of, and other days we just do the practice and we know that we got the benefit. We have no idea what it was that we let go of. Come around and switch which foot is crossed in front and then switch the direction of your movement. Get right back into it, maybe closing your eyes and turning your awareness inward to how you're feeling here. Continue to deepen your breath. your way up to a taller, stiller spine. Press your left hand to your right knee, your right hand behind you, and just do a gentle spinal twist. Anchor both of your sitting bones down while you're here, and then switch and go the opposite direction. Good, I'm going back to center. Let's maneuver forward onto our hands and our knees. Take your knees a little bit apart here. Sit your hips back towards your heels and stretch your hands forward for child's pose, grounding the third eye center towards the mat. Breathing a few deep breaths into the back of your hips and your lower back. Creating lots of room back there. Really lengthening back through your sitting bones and reaching forward through your fingertips. Create lots of length in your body. And just that can start to open things up. Letting go of anything mentally that has been in your mind that's not working. Dump it down into the earth right here. Every exhale is the opportunity to let go. And every inhale is the opportunity to start something new. A new way of thinking, of being, of doing, of acting. 
mindfully move back up onto your hands and your knees. From here, just step your right foot right next to your right hand and make sure your left knee is below your hips. So you have more of a boxy shape here. Take a deep breath in and you might need blocks underneath your arms here. Otherwise, we're lowering down to our forearms and I know we just began, but we're just gonna get this nice, good stretch across the back of the hips and the lower back. And for some of us, it's really deep in the hamstring area as well. Breathe into space. This is great for your digestion as your right thigh is pressing up against your ascend ascending colon. Relax your neck. Take a couple breaths here. Come back up onto your hands and just circle around, okay? Go in one direction, do little circles. Beautiful, go in the opposite direction with your circles. They don't have to be perfect. Pause, take your right knee back down towards the ground and move your left foot up outside of your left hand. Bring your back right knee in so it falls right below your hip and then lower to forms if that's doable or a block. Hang your head and breathe. Breathe space across your lower back. Release tension in your jaw, your face while you're working here. You don't want to spend all this time loosening up the hips only to tighten in the neck and shoulders. <laughs> Some of us spend the whole time gritting our hands, our face, our neck, and we walk out of here, our hips feel good, our back feels good, but our head hurts, and we have shoulder pain, neck pain, jaw pain. Come back up onto your hands, same thing here, do some circles here through your hips, just loosening up anything that might feel a little tight, go in the opposite direction. Good, and then bring your left knee back, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up and back into your downward facing dog and feel free to just pedal the legs out here. Getting into the backs of your legs, popping is normal, that always happens to me. Beautiful, walk your hands back to meet your feet, widen your feet a touch. So your feet are slightly wider than your hips with a little bend in your knees. Take yourself and walk over towards the right, but anchor your left foot down. Bend into your right knee a little bit here. Straighten out through your left leg. Press down through the outer edge of your left foot. Good, and then walk over towards the left. Bend your left knee, straighten the right leg, and press down through your right foot as best you can. Go lock your hands back to center. Tilt your toes out, your heels in, squat down for a malasana squat. You can place your block below your sitting bones here if you need it. Press your elbows into your inner knees. Heels, the goal is grounded. So kind of if you're having a struggle trying to get the heels down, you might just have to work towards it or maybe you have to adjust your feet here. Breathe space into the hips, into the spine, groin chest. Good. Pick your hands down to the mat. Drop your chin towards your chest. Let your back round a little. Walk your hands forward. Kind of grip the sticky mat and then let your hips kind of pull back just ever so slightly. Breathe into your back body. Walk your hands back forward, lengthen out through your legs. Find that down dog shape, let your leg slightly shorter in, and then just wag your hips side to side. Feel your legs stretching out. Good. Step the feet a little bit closer, take your right leg, reach it to the sky, bend your right knee, open up your hip. And move your knee around into some big circles here. Good. Opposite direction. Good. Knee reaches towards the sky. Deep breath in. 
exhale, step. The right foot between your hands. Lower your back left knee down to the ground. Relax through the back ankle. Take your arms up for a low lunge. Square the hips and shoulders. Make sure you spread your toes out. Grab a hold of your left wrist with your right hand. Lengthen up and then lengthen over towards the right. Feeling the outer left hip reaching forward. Breathing into creating some space here. Oh my gosh, that feels so good. <laughs> Deep breath in. Beautiful. Come on back up through center. Circle hands big and down towards the ground or take your blocks below your hands. Shift back, straighten your front right leg. Flex your ankle back and fold. Push down through your right heel and then pull back through your right hip. That, my friends, is your hamstring. <laughs> Good. Lift your heart up. Take your right hand to the right, and we're going to rebend into our right leg and walk it over towards the right. Our hands are inside of the right foot now. Pick up your left knee and inch it back just a little bit. I really do want you to be more on top of your thigh, less on your kneecap. Always pad your knee if you need it. So this is more of a lizard stretch. Our knee is farther back. You can hang out here on your hands, use blocks, or lower down to your forearms. Keep your right knee hugging your right side body to start. Relax your neck and shoulders, deepen your breath. I always just like tiny bit of movement, just kind of rocking side to side, moving that stretch throughout. And we're going to lean into either our left forearm. I actually like to do this up on my hand because I'm really tight. And roll to the outer edge of your right foot. And if you want to go deeper, take your right hand onto your right thigh and just roll the right shoulder back as you kind of press that thigh open. Be careful here that you don't go too far. Breathe. Release your hand down to the mat. Tuck the back toe. Lift the back knee up. Press back downward facing dog. Take a moment. Maybe pedal the legs. Maybe just breathe. If you're like me and you're feeling really tight in your hip flexors, you're going to shift forward with me towards plank. You're just going to stand the balls of your feet and then dip your hips down and pull your heart through. So it's a version of up dog. We're not on the tops of our feet. Could pull the belly in, lift your hips up and back into down dog. Left leg to the sky, bend your knee, open your hip up, and then take some time to circle your left knee around. Go in the opposite direction. Good, reach your foot to the sky, inhale. Exhale, step through. Low lunge first, lower the back knee down. Please pat it if you need to. Relax through your back ankle. Take your arms to the sky. Square your hips. Hips sink forward slightly here. Grab a hold of your right wrist with your left hand. Lift up. Palm is turning in on that right hand. And then lengthen up and over towards the left. Feel the outer right hip reach for it as best you can get it. Opening up the psoas. Amazing release for your hip flexor, psoas, lower back. Beautiful. Come on up. Circle your arms down towards the ground. Shift back, straighten through your left leg. Flex the ankle back and then fold in and breathe. Push down through your left heel and then kind of like you're going to pull your heel back. It's always amazing to me how deep it gets when you do that. Let's lift our heart. We bend our front knee. Move your hands inside of the foot. Pick the back knee up. Inch it back. Just one more inch. You can stay up here on your hands or lower down to your forearms for lizard. Keeping the left knee in, hugging by your side body to start. Relax your jaw, your neck, your hands. Sometimes just closing the eyes and breathing is all we need to do. I like this analogy. I always use this for the hips, but our hips are like a big garden, and then they have lots of weeds in them. And if we go through and just weed whack them, we know the weeds will be back next week. But if we go in and dig those roots out and get rid of the root, 
we will be free of that weed for the rest of time. So that is what we're doing here. We're going in. We're getting rid of stuff that is just not working anymore. Crawl up onto your hands or you can lean into your right forearm as well. Let your left foot roll to the outer edge and then place your left hand just above your knee. Roll both shoulder blades down the back. Breathe into that really beautiful opening. Both hands release down to the mat. Tuck your back toe, lift your back knee, press back down dog. Gotta check in with your hips here. Again, if the hip flexors need that little release, round your spine, roll forward, dip your hips as far as they need. Pull your belly in, pull your heart through, tone your legs, don't drop the knees. Exhale, move into down dog. Good, lower your knees down towards the ground. Knees are together, hips back towards heels, lean your hips over to the left. Move your hands over to the right, left hand on top. As you reach your left arm to the right, pull your hips back to the left. Feel your lower back, your outer hip, maybe your side body, your shoulder, all opening up. Now walk your hands through center, left hand on bottom, right hand on top, hips pull towards the right, reaching far to the left. And I have one side that I really feel a good stretch, the other I'm like, not so much, and I'm always like, what am I doing differently? But our bodies aren't necessarily the same from side to side. your hands back to center come up onto your hands and knees tuck your toes widen your feet and come back one more time from malasana heels in toes out squat down see if it's any better the second time <coughs> we're gonna do a little twist I love 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 this when my lower back or my hips are tight so you're gonna take your right shoulder hold your right knee open Fingers to the right, sweep your left arm up to the sky and just hang your head here. Breathe into all of that congestion in your right hip, creating lots of con like tightness there. When we release this, all this healing starts to happen. Switch sides, left shoulder in front of left knee, right hand sweeps up. Just hang your head, create all the space. Spine is gonna say thank you. Beautiful, both hands back down to the ground. Take your hands, walk them forward, downward dog. Let's shift forward to plank and lower down to our belly. That feels good. Take your left arm across your mat, bend your right knee. Take your right heel, pull it in towards your sitting bone. Use a strap if you need to, reach back through the right knee. Creating some stretch in the quad, but also opening up the front of the hip. If you feel any pain in your lower back, pull the lower belly in more. Gotta release that first side, switch, do the other. Use your strap if you can't reach. Reach back through the knee more, pull your lower belly in. Invite all of that length into your body. Release that second side. Push up onto your hands and your knees. Let's take our right knee and move it behind the right wrist, foot towards the left for a single leg pigeon. Inch back through your left knee, flatten through the back ankle. Lengthen through your spine. If you have a lot of space here, you can place a blanket or a block below your hip. Come down to your forearms or lay flat all the way down. You can also use, I like to use a block sometimes under my forehead here. So if this is just bugging your right knee, you can come to your back and cross your right ankle over the left thigh and do a figure four, like a thread the eye of the needle instead of single leg pigeon. Get into a place that you know is a nice good stretch and then stop wiggling and just be still and breathe here. Every time 
time I come to this stretch, I just know that I'm removing so many layers of stuff, mental blockages, traumas, uncertainties that just are not working. And instead of looking backwards, just trying to propel my mind, my energy forward into what will be and can be in the future and not what could have been or what should have been in the past. You can rewrite your story. Allow yourself to be in this space, in this moment. Breathe. We are so powerful. If you're in the single leg pigeon, you might head back into down dog or hands and knees to stretch it out. If you're on your back, just switch sides there, okay? So I always like to press back into down dog and then really just like shake my leg. <laughs> One of my teachers said, imagine a giant is holding your big toe and is shaking you vigorously. <laughs> it really does work though. Okay, right foot to the ground. Left knee moves behind the left wrist, a little flex in the ankle, inch your right knee back. Relax your back foot, make sure it's straight back, lengthen your spine first, grab your props as needed, and then fold over the front chin. Taking any tension out of places in your body that just start tightening up your hands, your face, your neck, your shoulders. Once you get into your position, just pause and breathe. Allow the stress to peel off your physical body. Beautiful, let's come back up. One more little stretch here. So again, you can take your left leg to the sky and then shake it out. When you're ready, come on down. You're gonna turn to the side on your mat. I'm gonna stay facing forward just so you can see what we're doing. I do suggest that you roll the edges of your mat over to give your knees more padding or use a blanket if you have one handy. Okay, so turning to the side just so you can use the padding of your mat. We're going to take our knees wide here for frog pose. Okay, so the feet are going to flex out to the sides. You have your ankle, knee, and hip in this nice right angle. Okay, you might feel like you need <laughs> a block or a bolster underneath your chest. That's really nice. But ag again, you're coming forward and you're resting down. What you don't want to be is too far forward or too far back here. Your hips and knees are in a straight line. So do your best to try to kind of find that in your body and then find a place, maybe you're resting on your forms like I am or you're laying down on a bolster on some blocks. That's very helpful. Breathe into this deeper hip stretch. It is intense, my friends. So if you're in it and you're like, holy moly, yes, I'm here, I'm with you. And I haven't done this one in a while, so wake up, right? Um, this Manduka Asana, this is um, the pose that Manduka, my favorite yoga props, are made, named after. This is just, I mean, it unlocks all the demons, I promise you. Many of us right now will kind of feel a little teary-eyed while we're here. The emotions bubble up. And I suggest that you really do just release whatever stress is coming up. If you have a big sway in your lower back right now, pull your belly up and in. Support that lower spine. And we have about 30 more seconds here. And I promise you, you are going to be okay. 
breathe into all the sensations. If you are on your forms like I am, make sure you're not sagging down into your shoulders, okay? So you get like almost a little plank action happening at the same time. I can tell you my shoulders are like, hello. They're burning a little bit. It's good for them. Last few breaths here. Every exhale, release something that is not serving your purpose anymore. Some people like to slide onto their belly to come out of this. I, however, like to come up and just bring my knees together and sit back towards a child's pose. Knees all the way together so you're feeling supported. <sighs> I started sweating in that one, you guys. It can be quite intense to open the hips up. They're where we store our emotions, our old habits, our memories, and a lot of us have a lot of things stuffed in there that are traumas, right? They cause anxiety. They make us feel crummy. So I really do hope that this practice has helped you just kind of release a few layers of all that stuff that we, for whatever reason as humans, hang on to. Peel up onto your knees, sit off onto one hip. Take your feet just wide. Actually, let's do this on our back. Take your feet wide on your back and just swish your knees side to side. Can really help everything unwind. Take your right foot over towards the right, cross your left ankle over onto your right thigh, and then just let your knee fall to the right. Okay, you can stretch your left arm out. You can take your right hand kind of on the top of your thigh and just kind of push a little bit, and that will give a little bit more length. Feels amazing in the back hip, outer hip area. Just creating some space. Closing the eyes and just breathing into all the goodness that you're giving yourself today. Let's come on back to center. Take your left foot down, just in line with your left hip. Right ankle crosses over a good flex in the ankle. Keep your foot where it is and just tumble your leg over to the left. Okay, stretch your right arm out and then take your left hand right onto the top of your right thigh and just give a little push. Your right foot might be on the ground or not. So you're creating all this space in your lower back, in the back of your hip. Close your eyes and just breathe into all that goodness. Remember, our bodies are not created equal. We don't look the same doing these poses. It's terrible, terrible practice to judge yourself against like pictures or what you might see on social media. So I just really encourage you do the practice, feel it out, do what feels good in your body. Leave the rest behind. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's called a practice for a reason. We're not trying to find perfection. Come on back to center. Let's do one more stretch. I love this for the lower back. So feet are anchored down. You're just putting your hands on the tops of your thighs and pushing into your hands. And I literally can feel like an inch of space down at my lower back here. Feels delightful. Beautiful. Today, we're going to finish in Supta Baddha Konasana. So your soles of your feet are together, your knees are to the sides. If this feels too intense, place blocks to the outer knees. Take one hand on your belly, one on your chest. Relax down, close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Side out. Allow yourself to just be still here for a moment. Letting go of your breath, just allowing the hips to fall open. And letting the stress peel off of your body. The hips are the home of our second chakra, a place of joy, creativity, sexuality, pleasure, 
So allowing yourself to tap into more creativity, more playfulness, more joy. Allowing the hips to feel more open, the pelvis to feel more open and supported. Okay, when we're too uptight and we don't allow any room in our life for fun things, we might feel extra bogged down in this place in our body. So my homework to you is in the next 24 hours, find something fun to do that taps into the energy of the second chakra, the hips, the pelvis, something playful, childlike, creative, artsy, you know, something that gives you joy. And then pay attention to how your hips feel in the next few days. I encourage you to stay here a little bit longer. If you want more of a traditional Shavasana, you can scoop your knees in and just stretch your legs out. That might feel good. In fact, it feels really good. And I thank you, friends, for being here. Spend a little bit more time on your back just being still with your quiet thoughts. Thank you so much for your practice today. Namaste.